Yeah, I mean, I was pretty rebellious, and I'm glad I found something pot that I could take in a, my rebellion in a positive direction. Um, and I was like, all right, I hate the man. What am I going to do with my hatred of the man? It's either going to get me in jail, or I can. And so I was lucky to find an industry that's dominated by foreign conglomerates that have kind of industrialized this natural-made product that was a local thing for you know millennia before it became dominated by a few global companies. I'm like, okay, that gives me something. That's to, an easy man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I got the man now. And then I learned about this German beer law, where they made it a law that you could only make beer with three or four ingredients. Really? So I'm like, that's bullshit, because humans have been making alcoholic beverages for thousands of years with it, whatever is beautiful and grows you know, wherever they live. So I'm like, okay, that's the man. So between those things, I found these two uh, establishment points that I could use my energies to fight against. Yeah. Um, and that made it positive. And you know, the biggest thing for Mariah and I as mom and pop entrepreneurs is a, trying to, and parents, is trying to balance the guilt and reality of us not having normal work life yeah. balance yeah. and being at home, and you, you guys I'm sure can speak to this too, but, um, and trying to not to feel guilty about it, trying to make them feel that dogfish is a good thing for our community, and, um, and, uh, and the, the challenge there is just having those conversations and treating them, uh, you know, as, as uh, not as kids, but as human beings who can learn from it and can make their own opinions. Certainly, it would it'd be warm my heart if uh, if Greer or Sammy, our children, or both of them were willing and capable of keeping Dogfish Head going as a family company. And Mariah and I, at, at this point in our careers, that's we're very interested in seeing if we can make that happen. And then we, when they get to their mid-twenties, I would guess, we'll have a better understanding if either or both of them are interested. And then if they're not, we'll make some other decision that won't be selling out to the world's biggest brewery. Uh, I know that, but uh, they'll be have to some other decision on what we'll, we'll, how we transition. But for now, that's what we want, and then we have to balance that against not making them feel the pressure of that on their shoulders of, okay, we're working at our asses off and building this big thing, relatively big, not market share wise, but number of people that work here wise, relatively for our area, big thing. And we don't want that to taint their, uh, um, you know, their growth as humans and as teammates. Like we're doing this for you. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. I don't want that, <laughs> but I want them to be interested and excited. And Sammy, our son, has chosen to work at our, our pub in Rehoboth oh, awesome. in the summers. And uh, when he told me two years ago it would be the last place he'd ever work, and, and now he feels that the, like those are his co co-workers uh, more than their mind. He's like, you hang out with the brewery guys, I'm going to hang out with the pub guys. And I, I'm like, hey Sam, we're all co-workers. And he's like, eh, whatever, dad. So, so those are good signs, but I don't want to put the pressure on them that they have to do this. I, uh, I'm hopeful that Mariah and I can make it where one of them will want to do it. And then if they don't want to, I, I'm hopeful that that's okay with me too.